Hey, it's Mike. My name is Old Religious Utopia, No Inverse Belief. I'm going to read out of the JewishVirtualLibrary.org, John of Giscala. And it should be interesting. It's a bit of history that's connected with, uh, believe it or not, the Bible. New Testament in particular. Let's see what we can do here. Let's see if that's big enough or not or not. Yeah, that'd be good right there. We never could see it there were. John of Agiscala. John uh, Johannan Van Levy. A leader of the revolt against Rome in 66 to 70 AD. John was a native of uh, Giscala, Gush Havla. Ha ha Maybe that's how you're supposed to be, Gush Havla. Not Giscala, Giscala. God does what. Anyways, little is known of him before the war when the inhabitants of Tyre. Uh, Gadara and others sacked and burned his uh, native town. He rebuilt it and took revenge on the invaders. So, once again, who was say the inhabitants of Tyre, Ga Gadara, and others sacked and burned his native town? Were they Rome's? Romans? No. They were Jews. He rebuilt it and took revenge of the on the invaders. His realization that the Romans had stood by and even encouraged the invaders to attack Jews made him alter his former attitude of loyalty towards the Romans. He began to prepare Galilee for the coming struggle. In the spring of 66, Josephus arrived as commander of Galilee and soon involved with John in a conflict which developed into a lasting and bitter struggle. Josephus' account is prejudiced by his personal animosity towards John. But he nevertheless gives credit to John's effort in preparing for the struggle. John suggested to Josephus that funds be provided from the scales of grain belonging to the Romans. From the olive oil sold um, to the Jews is interesting. In Syria... He presumably needed these funds for defense, although Josephus accused him of desiring to use them for personal purposes. Open conflict erupted between them at Tiberias when John learned that Josephus intended to restore the property plundered for the, for, from the steward of King Ag Agrippa who was considered a Roman sympathizer. John's supporters included many um, Galatians, fugitives from Tyre, men of Gabara, including their leader, Simon. Justice of Tiberius and his father, Pistus, what a name, and the Akron of Taferis, our Archon, I guess that'd be an Archon, like the Archons, a leader, Archons, Archon of Tiberius, oh, I thought they were supposed to be spirits, anyways, Joshua, Jesus, son of Cephas, John dispatched the delegation to Jerusalem, demanding that Josephus be dismissed from his position for failing to fulfill his task loyal, loyally. 
This request was ascended to and according to Josephus as a result of John's bribery and exploitation of his friendship with Simon B. Agamaliel, I guess I should pronounce it. The emissary, excuse me, emissaries were sent to dismiss Josephus from his command and advised the citizens of Galatia to support John. Josephus ignored all this and went so far as to threaten John's supporters. Josephus claimed that he succeeded in weaning most of John's followers away from him. John's efforts to organize Galilee for war were unsuccessful and with the expectation of his native city, the whole of the province fell to the Romans. In the winter of 67, when Titus was at the gates of Gis, I don't know how they pronounce that again, Gush Havla, but it's we guess we in English we pronounce it Gish Kala, but it's Gish Havla, and offered terms of surrender. John seized the seized on the intervening Sabbath as a pretext for delaying negotiation and escaped where to Jerusalem. John in Jerusalem. John encouraged the insurgents in Jerusalem to continue the war against Rome. At first he cooperated with Annan B. Annan and members of the government. R relations between the zealots and the government, however, steadily deteriorated and reached a, a crisis when uh, what's how you pronounce it? Finney or Finn has or Finney B. Samuel, the high priest, was selected by lot. In the ensuing struggle, the priestly crisis uh, arose, uh, aroused the people against the zealots. John tried to serve as mediator. Josephus accused him of betraying the trust placed in him, but it seems that John became convinced that it was impossible to bribe or to me, bridge the gulf between the two camps and went over the side of the zealots. He may possibly have been influenced by rumors that the moderate elements were thinking of surrendering the city to the Romans. On his advice, the zealots, who had fortified themselves in the temple, made a common cause with the Idiomenes and together overcame the moderates. The government of the Jerusalem was thus concentrated in John's hands, causing division for a time among the zealots. As those in Jerusalem disapproved of the uh, supremacy of the Galatian and of one of their leaders, Eliza B. Simon, or Simeon, actually opposed John for a time. John gradually prevailed, and the Jerusalem zealots join his camp. Josephus portrays the period of John's rule in Jerusalem in the most somber terms, depicting complete anarchy and a lack of regard for human life. Even if it is conceded that the zealots avenged themselves on their opponents, am I seeing this right? Yeah with a scant regard to judicial procedures, John's positive effort to fortify the city and properly equip it against the coming siege cannot be overlooked. His opponents, however, would not conceal themselves concede themselves conceal themselves to his victory. 
and invited Simon Bar Giora, I guess it's Giro, 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 Giora, so Simeon Bar Giora, I don't know how you pronounce the name, to the city to head the opposing force. In incessant inter what's this and turn in the same strife between the two leaders was checked in part but not entirely only when Titus appeared at the gates of the city as the siege intensified John did not hesitate to melt down the vessels of the temple to provide weapons which that would be an abomination of desolation, right? And use the temple supplies set aside for ritual purposes to ease the famine. Which it turns out, I think the truth is, he, along with others, were, responsible, were burning up most of the wheat. It's supposed to have 50 year supply of wheat, but we'll look into that. We will look into that. Um... As the season testified, John did not hesitate to melt down the vessel because blah, 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 the original purpose of famine. The cities, when the, with the cities captured, John was among the prisoners taken to Rome and included in Titus's triumphal victory procession. Simeon Bar in Giora was apparently regarded by the Romans as a Jewish commander in chief and was executed while John was sentenced to life imprisonment. And sort of thing that I learned too is about the Jews, those that were uh, taken into slavery, they're the ones that end up building the Colosseum. Isn't that interesting? says here and just in the Wikipedia not to say this is the best of things but who knows uh, <clears throat> but we'll look into this when John entered Jerusalem it was an uproar and the people clamored for news John went among the people and persuaded them to go to war by the hopes he gave them he affirmed that the affairs with the Romans were in a weak con condition, and extolled his his own and extolled his own power. He also jested upon the ignorance of the unskillful, as if those Romans, although they should take to themselves wings, could never fly over the wall of Jerusalem. Who fought uh, such? Who who? Found such great difficulties in taking the villages of Gal Galilee, which turned out not to be true, and had broken their engines of war against their walls. These har harangues of John's corruption, a great part of the of of the young men, and puffed them up. For war, soon after his arrival in Jerusalem, he played an instrumental part of the outcome of the Zealots' temple siege, handing the city over to the control of the Zealots. He attempted to set himself as a ruler of Jerusalem, but was challenged in April of 69 A.D. by Simeon Bar Georgia. Uh, I don't know, I'm probably not even saying that last name right. They were both in turn challenged by the third faction led by Eliza Ben Simon. John and the Zealots fought in the Civil War with these two factions until he was finally captured by the, the Titus during the Siege of Jerusalem. He was sentenced to life imprisonment, taken to Rome, and paraded through the streets in chains. The Zealots Temple Siege. 
in 268 A.D. With short seas of the temple in Jerusalem fought between Jewish factions during the First Jewish-Roman War, which is the same war that ended destroying Jerusalem and satisfied, at least if you believe what the Bible says, of the fulfilling of all Jesus prophesied about. Now, if you really pay attention to what the Bible says and what Jesus said, all his prophecies were not about us and the future. They were all about what was going to happen to his people. His apostles, his disciples, what was going to happen to Jerusalem, what was going to happen to the temple. And it had nothing to do with us in this day. Now, that's very heartbreaking if you're a devout, say, Christian or a Catholic or uh, Orthodox or any of the other, you know, evangelical, whatever, and you've been told all this long time that, that has some, you have something to do with the story, you don't, outside of the fact of whether you believe on it or not. That's about it. And it's the damnedest thing to realize that really everything was fulfilled between the years 66 to 70 AD, literally. Even no matter how hard we try to justify <laughs> Even the book of Revelation truly was written before 66 AD. If it wasn't, then we have one hell of a cruel God. But we can go into detail with that if anybody wants to talk about it. Uh, of course, I will. According to the historian, Joseph, historian Josephus, the forces of Ananus, Ananus, Ben Ananus, uh, one of the heads of the Ju Judean provincial government and former high priest of Israel besieged the zealots who held the temple. When John of Giscala or Gishavla or whatever huh? well, I don't know how to pronounce the name led the zealots to believe that Ananus um and Anus <laughs> had contacted the Roman general Vespasian, Vespasian uh, for assistance in retaking control of Jerusalem. The zealots, driven the uh, to desperation, asked the Edomites or the Edomins, the Edomins, for assistance in preventing the delivery of the city of Rome. When the Edomites arrived, the zealots opened the gates of Jerusalem to them. The Edomites slaughtered Ben Hanan's and an Anus Ben and Anus forces and killed them all as well. After freeing the zealots from the temple, the Edomites and the zealots massacred the common people. Jerusalem mostly remained in the control of the zealots until 70 AD when it was sacked by the Rome by Rome and the temple was destroyed. <clears throat> the zealots were a political movement of the first century Judaism that sought to incite the people of Judea Judean province to rebel against the Roman Empire and expel it from the Holy Land by force of arms. <laughs> What's it say? Father, I crave cheddar. <laughs> <laughs> Father, I crave cheddar. Uh, that sounds so silly. He's supposed to be going to bed. Chase, you need to start going to bed now, buddy. Chase. Huh. You really do need to go to bed now. I know you're excited and all that, but it's 12.30. Gives once in a while, they let them up to, to like two, three in the morning. But since I'm not going, I don't have the whole weekend. I should get some tomorrow afternoon. No, but by the way, I'm supposed to do an interview with, excuse me, Ryan Redding, uh, the Northwest Bigfoot something or other. And uh, I've met him before. He seems a nice guy. There's a lot of confusion when it comes to this these four spirits and what the hell they are. And. Uh, I think it's been delivered just like everything else has been totally de deliberately been twisted. 
Anyways, the Jewish-Roman War began in the year 66 AD with the Greek and the Jews' religious tension and expanded into anti-taxation protest and the Jews attacked upon the Roman uh, citizens. Also, this is 66 AD. I mean, there's also, if you find it, there's reports of, you know, angels or men in chariots of fire in the, in the sky. And this is also about the same time or at that time when the second coming of Christ happened. Which I know which is now has blown everybody away. But that's... Jesus said it was going to happen in their generation, not in ours. So we have to come to terms with that. However, by the year 68, the Jewish resistance in the north had been crushed and the Roman general Vespasian had established his headquarters at Caesarea Mar Maritima. The leaders of the collapsed northern revolt, John of Giscala and Simon ben Jaiora, or something like that. Gio, I guess it's Jaiora. I don't know. We can see how they spell it, how they pronounce it. Let's go real fast. Just give his pronunciation. Uh, it probably does somewhere. Anyways. Managed to escape to Jerusalem, but brutal civil war erupted as the zealots and the fanatical Saikari executed anyone advocating surrender. In 19, excuse me, in 80, in 68 AD, there was growing unrest in Jerusalem. And Anus Ben and Anus. <laughs> it's his <just, laughs> funniest name. And Anus Ben and Anus excited the people to uprise against the zealots who were uh, robbing the people and using the temple for of Jerusalem as their base of operation. The desolate, you know, the abomination of desolation. This is talking about the Bible. This is what they're talking about. This is really what it's about. They had no business being in that temple. They defiled the temple. Ben Hanna began to recruit for armed conflict. The zealots who were quartered in the temple learned that Ben Hanna was preparing for battle. And sallied forth, attacking all in their way. Ben Hanna quickly organized the people against them. The skirmish began with the belligerent throwing rocks at one another. So the belligerents throwing rocks at one another, then javelins, then finally hand to hand combat with swords and suit. Now, man, this is inside. Inside Jerusalem, this is Jews killing Jews. This is not even the Romans doing anything at this point. And we don't talk much about that, but we should talk much about that. Eventually, the zealots retreated in the inner court of the temple, and 6,000 of Ben Hanna's men held the first outer court. Of course, there'd be 6,000. There could not be any other, right? Well, he's got to have a six in there. According to Josephus, John of Gescala, who secretly sought to rule Jerusalem, had cultivated a friendship with Ananus. John of Gescala uh, was a man of great craft, bore out about him in his soul and strong and strong passion after tyranny and pretended to be of the people's opinion and went all about with Ananus when he consulted with the great men every day. In the nighttime also when he went around the watch 
but he divulged their secrets to the zealots. And everything that the people deliver, deliberated was that about was by his means known to the, their enemies, even before it had been well agreed upon by themselves. John was suspected of being a spy and was made to swear an oath of goodwill to An and Anus Ben and Anus. And we'll have to look about who this guy is because I wonder he has something to do. Who is this guy anyways? Let's just look at who this guy is. Ben and Anus Ben and Anus. I don't get myself sidetracked here too much. An anus, Ben and anus. What a name. Ah, there are all these different ways. A Rhodian era high priest of Israel in Jerusalem. Probably, I wonder how, how what, what his connections are to the false prophet. If the beast truly is, after all, the beast system, or the, well, actually be the man of perdition, right? Whatever the hell his name is. That would be, uh, shoot, I don't know. I think some more thinking on that one. You can get yourself all over the place with this stuff. Um... Where is Ananus? Okay, after swearing oath, Ananus sent John, John of Gizkala and, and into the inner court to speak with the zealots on his behalf. John immediately turned coat as if his oath had been made to the zealots, telling them that they were in immediate danger and could not survive the siege. He told them that they had two options. To surrender, in which case they would either face execution. Uh, Vigilantism, excuse me. Or retribution for the desperate things that they had done or two. To ask the outs outside assistance. John told the zealots that an and anus and anus uh, had sent ambassadors to Vespasian, Vespasian to ask him to come take the city. The f this, in fact, was not true, but convinced them that they could not endure the siege without help. The zealots hesitated a great while while they could, should what they should do considering the shortness of time by which they were uh, straightened straightened. The people because the people were prepared to attack them very soon and because the suddenness of the plot laid against them had almost cut off all their hopes of getting any foreign assistance for they might um, be under the height of their afflictions before any of their confederates could be informed of it. However, it was resolved to call in the Idiomines, the Idiomites, Edomites so they wrote a short letter to this effect that an anus had imposed on the people and was betrayed betraying their uh, metropolis to the Romans what's up buddy you should watch salmon Kobe. why they, they go ghost hunting and it's actually legit is it? Well, I don't want you to be watching that. You, uh, that they themselves, uh, not now. You can watch it when you're older, but not now. You don't know what you're getting yourself into watching that stuff. 
I said, you don't know what you're getting yourself into watching that stuff. Again, if you don't take the name of Jesus seriously, I don't know what to say. Will you turn that down because I'm recording, buddy? That they themselves have revolted from the rest and were in custody of, in the temple on account of the preservation of their liberty, that there was but a small time left wherein they might hope for their deliverance that unless they would come immediately to their assistance, they should themselves be soon in the power of an anus, and the city would be in the power of the Romans. The messengers managed to seek, sneak out of the temple and successfully deliver their message to the rulers, uh, rulers of the Edomites, who were greatly alarmed and quickly raised an army of 20,000. To march to Jerusalem in order to maintain the liberty of their metropolis. Upon receiving word that 20,000 Edomites were marching on Jerusalem, Ben Hanna, Han, Han An, ordered the gates shut against them and the walls guarded. And Jesus, one of the elder high priests, made a speech from the wall denouncing the zealots as robbers and telling the Edomites to throw down their arms. Simon, son of Cathless, Kath, uh, one of the Edomites' commanders, quieted the tumult of his own men and answered, I can no longer wonder that the patrons of liberty are under custody in the temple since there are those that shut the gates of our common city to their na to our to their own nation and at the same time are prepared to admit the Romans into it nay perhaps are disposed to crown the gates with the garlands at their coming while they speak to the Idiomans from their own towers and enjoin them to throw down their arms which they have taken up for the preservation of liberty. That night a thunderstorm blew over Jerusalem and the, th and the hmm, that's interesting and the zealots sneaked from the temple to the gates cut the bars of the gates with saws, the sound masked by the sound of the wind and thunder. They opened the gates of Jerusalem to the Edomites, who fell upon the guards and made their way to the temple. They slaughtered Ananias' forces. Ananias' forces. Uh, there, killing him as well. After freeing the zealots from the temple, they massacred common people. Eventually, after learning that Vespasians had never been contacted by Ananus and Ananus, the Edomites repented and left the city. Aftermath Jerusalem remained in the hands of the zealots until the siege of Jerusalem in 7. Or, of, yeah, in 70 AD by the Roman legions under Titus resulted in the sack of the city and the capture and imprisonment of the zealot leaders. And then it always gets, you know, the references to the, the Jewish wars. Um, the Jewish war, excuse me. And... Uh, War of the Jews and what I would like to see we'll, we'll see what would happen if I look up ah uh, maybe we'll do that another time anyways 
Um, yeah, we'll look more into that. And um, but I'm getting very, 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 very persuaded that everything about uh, uh, a book of Revelation is all about this time period. Now that makes a lot of Christians unhappy, and it made me unhappy for a long time too, because if I'm right, that means. That the, uh, of our uh, our leadership for the past two thousand years have known that this is the case, for the most part. Those and um, God forbid the lying that's been going on and how they've turned the average Christian into a big fat liar, not intentionally. Uh, the the, uh, the average Christian being a liar, but based on ignorance, right? So there you go. <clears throat> there you go. Ben of Geskela. I guess we were how you would say it. Now, a lot of people say that he was actually very much talked about in the Bible. And we'll talk more about that. But anyways, interesting. The mark of the beast in the Bible is very simple, and nothing else that anybody else says about the Bible or about the mark of the beast has any biblical backing. Everyone just tries to guess what the mark of the beast was with actually no verses to back it up. So we'll just get straight to the point. The mark of the beast was the law. In Exodus and Deuteronomy, whenever the law was given, it said, bind this upon your hand and let it be for frontlets between your eyes. It said, let this be for a sign upon your hand and a memorial between your eyes. But the law was a curse, and it said Jesus Christ was made a curse for them, and said he redeemed them from the curse of the law. The law was never going to be the covenant of God. It was added 490 years later, I think they said, or it was 430. It was added to the covenant of circumcision because of their transgressions, because of their wickedness. Paul said, what was the law written for? He said, it was written for the wicked, not for the righteous. Then Jesus Christ came born under the law, to redeem those who were born under the law. The ministration of death, the ministration of condemnation. He was made a curse for them, removing the curse of the law, so that there would be no more strength of sin, and he came to end sin. It is the very thing that Jesus came to do. He said he came to fulfill the law, and they said he came to end sin. That is what he came to do. But in 66 A.D., the zealots, because they were zealous of the law, they were called zealots, right? These leaders, and they got all of Israel together, all the unbelievers, and they called themselves zealots, and they went to fight Rome because they were zealous of the law. And they were still trying to keep the Passover and everything else in the law. They were saying that the temple would not be destroyed, that the customs of Moses would not be changed like Jesus said, like Stephen said. They said that that wouldn't happen. They said that Jesus was not the Messiah. God wouldn't end the law and they got everybody to fight rome saying god will keep us we will he will not let this temple be destroyed and millions of jews called these zealot leaders the messiah the mark of the beast was a jewish thing those that overcame the mark of the beast sang the song of moses according to revelations chapter 14 gentiles never had moses they never had the law jesus did not come to give them the law he came to fulfill the law Gentiles having not the law do by nature the things contained in the law. Gentiles were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenants of promise, without Christ, having no hope and without God in the world. And they were made nigh by the blood of Christ whenever Jesus broke down the middle wall of partition that was between them, talking about the law, and taking the handwritten ordinances which were contrary to them, nailing them to the cross, taking them out of the way, making in himself one new man, so making peace. And the Gentiles were made nigh by the blood of Christ." See, whenever Jesus was on earth, the New Testament had not started yet. The Gentiles did not come in yet. Whenever Jesus was here in the flesh, he went to Israel only. He called the Gentiles dogs, said it's not me to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. And then he was not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator, because a testament is not a force while men live. It's only in effect after they die. Gentiles were grafted in after Jesus came and said that he was going to fulfill that law. 
And in Acts, they were arguing that they should put the Gentiles under circumcision and under the law. And Peter stood up and said, why are we trying to put a burden on them that not even us or our fathers could bear? So they did not give the law to the Gentiles. This is why the mark of the beast was a Jewish thing. It's why it said, any man who has wisdom, let him count the number of the beast, for it's the number of a man. Their letters back then were numbers. So anybody's name, anybody that was learned in math or anything like that, Whenever you would say their name, or any word for that matter, every word would have a sum. So in 66 AD, God left the temple, so that the man of sin could come and sit in the temple. He who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way, and then that man of sin would be revealed. They could not sit in the temple of God until God left the temple. Once the glory cloud in 66 AD, it's written in history, moved off the temple, and a voice came up in the temple saying, Get thee hence because it was imminent destruction, is what they said in history. It was a bad omen. Uh, the believers fled into the wilderness, where they had a place prepared away from the face of the serpent for 1,260 days away from the face of this war. And they were nourished there in the wilderness under the glory cloud of God. Hi, now the Jews took this law thing literally. They actually used to bind little scrolls to their hand and their forehead. They'd have a little box with a scroll in it, is what the Bible's talking about. Whenever in Revelations chapter 10, it says he put one foot on the, the angel put one foot on the sea and one foot on the earth. One beast came up out of the sea, that's Israel, and the other beast came up out of the earth, that's the false prophet coming up out of Jerusalem. And he had a little scroll in his hand, a scroll that was big enough to eat. And John was going to write what it was, but the angel said, write it not, seal it up. He wasn't allowed to say what the mark of the beast was. Because the beast was given power to overcome the saints. Anybody who did not believe in Jesus Christ, that angels, those seven angels that uttered their voices, were actually telling him that the law was the mark of the beast. And John wasn't allowed to write it because they were not allowed to know beforehand what the mark of the beast was. Because anybody who worshipped that image, anybody who said the law says, the law says, the law says, making the image of the beast speak, would not be of Christ, because the very thing that he came to do was destroy the temple, was destroy, was finish the law, and end sin. And in 66 AD, these zealots that were zealous of the law took over the temple. Millions of them fought the Romans, fought with the Romans, were destroyed by the Romans. And they tried to keep the law. They called themselves the Messiah. They thought that God, would, Jesus would have a kingdom on this earth and that the temple would not be destroyed. They kept the very thing that Jesus Christ came to do. They rejected everything that Christ was, and they were destroyed because of it. And the custom of the Jews back then was, Jews could not spend any money except for their own currency. That's why they had the money changers in the temples. So these zealots would not allow Christians into the temple because they didn't keep the law and they didn't keep the Passover. They saw Jesus Christ as the new Passover. Like Paul said, Jesus, our Passover, which was crucified for us, he became their new Passover, and they started taking communion. And these zealots would not allow. They took over the temple. They killed 12,000 people, all the council and all the priests in Israel, and took over the temple. And they would not allow Christians in. They would not allow them to exchange their money. They would kill Christians, and they, they couldn't buy or sell. The reason that they sang the song of Moses was because the Jews were put under the law. But Moses saw the glory. If you read 2 Corinthians chapter 3, he calls the Ten Commandments the ministration of death and the ministration of condemnation, says that they were done away and abolished, and that that veil was lifted off the people. He said back then that that veil was still on their hearts in the reading of the Old Testament because they had not turned to Christ. And it said that Moses had to put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away. The law was to be fulfilled through Christ, and Moses saw the glory of God. He looked past the law. Those that overcame that actually saw that glory that Moses had before the law was given as a curse. So they sang the song of Moses. And how fitting it was that this last battle, Armageddon, took place because of Passover. The custom of the Jews back then, for Pentecost passed over in the Feast of the Tabernacles, they would travel from all over the world, especially for Passover. That was the main one. If they didn't come for the other ones, they came for Passover. And they would travel all over the world, from all over the world to descend upon Jerusalem, all of them from all over. It was their custom. It was a commandment. They came. They left everything they were doing, and they came to Jerusalem. Now, 
In 70 AD, at the end of this war, three days before Passover, the Romans got an idea. They made their final stand for the temple. They called up 10 legions of Roman soldiers, and they allowed all of Israel in. They let all of them come in, and then they built a wall around them. They blocked them off, kept them in the city of Jerusalem. And this is that last war about the abomination of desolation. But that is how Satan gathered everybody together. He was the accuser of the brethren through the law. That's what he did. And these people that rejected Christ as the new Passover, who came to fulfill the law, they rejected him and kept the law for a sign upon their hand and a memorial between their eyes. They gathered themselves together from all over the world for Passover, and God did not pass over them. He didn't. He destroyed them. Over a million of them died just on the day the temple was destroyed. They rejected Jesus Christ, called themselves the Messiah, uh, kept the law for a sign upon their hand, a memorial between their eyes, said that the temple would not be destroyed, rejected every single thing that Jesus Christ came to do. Rejected it, the whole thing. And they were killed because of Passover. Putting the blood on the post did not help them. The Romans started this war, and Satan gathered all Israel together for Passover. And Passover was the beginning of the law. The law on the Passover, it says, that they would bind it upon their hand and let it be for frontlets between their eyes. So that was the mark of the beast. I hope that you guys subscribe and come see. I'll be posting a video a day. At least I'm trying to post at least one video a day. So, thanks.